You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he is good. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, so all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on our donation page. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to Change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. I still have the cassette tape of that conversation between me and my father and Curly. And uh, what was kind of cute was he told me, he said, you've been called into ministry. And Curly started laughing, Debbie, because she, she's thinking I've been called in the ministry. <laughs> so, you know, she had been telling me, you need to go to Bible school. You need to go to Bible school. And so I, I, I elbowed her like, <laughs> no, she elbowed me like, huh, huh, I told you. He said, I don't know what you're laughing about. You've been called in with. <laughs> so he said, Paul, you know, you're supposed to be a pastor of a church. You know, you're supposed to be a pastor. You're supposed to be ministering the word of God. And so. I didn't immediately jump on that. I went to school to make sure that I, I, because you never feel ready. You never feel ready enough. You don't know enough. But that's where the anointing comes in. So that anger instantly left once my father gave me a destiny. So what I want to do today is I want to give these young children a destiny. And God is going to give it to them because he's already started to plant data, information to them. So I wanted to just give you a few scriptures on laying on of hands, so you'll understand what I'm doing when that takes place. Now, so 
uh, these children were running around in, in, in this area, you know, in Scripture. And Jesus is sitting there, and he's observing them. But they want to come to him. Because how many of you all know that children can let us know who's good and who's bad? You don't have to tell them anything. They know Billy Bob is not a good guy. And they know Sally Joe, you can go over to her. So the disciple said, you're too busy for this. And he said, no, bring them to me. And this is what he did. How many can understand that just by holding somebody, you can change their life? He didn't pet them on the head. He said he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them and did what? So that's what's going to take place today. You understand? That's what Jesus did. So is he our example? Next scripture. See, I know you weren't prepared for this, but you, you, you flow. Look at uh, Luke chapter 13. And he laid Luke chapter 13, verse 13. And he laid his hands on her. This was a lady that was stricken. And he laid his hands on her. He did what? And who's that example? And when? Immediately. Wait a minute. She got to go back to the doctor. Wait a minute. She got to wait till tomorrow. Wait a minute. She hadn't taken enough pills. Nothing against doctors. Nothing against pills. You can go back to the doctor. They confirm what you have already received. So don't stop taking your medicine. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. So what's supposed to happen to you when you get hands laid on you? You're supposed to be healed and you're supposed to give God glory. Got it? So you don't talk about what you did. You talk about what he did. So this is where he gave me the understanding about bypassing people's intellect. When you've been, you know, it's like sometimes you don't have time for things. You got to get it done. And laying on the hands bypasses you, like your thinking, your abilities, the things you've tried to fix, the things you tried to do, and he just straightened them out because the word says immediately. Not yesterday, but right now. Everybody got that one? Look at, uh, thanks, Cheryl. You, 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 you going? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. For this reason, I remind you to kindle, to afresh. You got it? Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance. Why does he have to put us in remembrance? Because sometimes we forget. Sometimes we get caught up in a whole lot of stuff. Y'all, y'all know what stuff is, right? That thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. So when hands are laid upon you, there is a gift that has been transferred to you. But you have to rekindle that gift in tongues. So when you're tired and you start speaking in tongues, it's created by laying hands on you, then that builds you up. And he said, don't forget, you got to refresh that. Remember to stir up the gift. You know how you stir up something? Curly be making cookies. He said, can you stir this up? And I stir it up. Well, the Holy Spirit is much stronger than any cookie. Y'all got it? Amen? And I just said that. So I'm going to call Generation J2 up first. You guys can come on up. Stand right here. So Thursday nights, you know, we are teaching about how to operate in the gifts. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about a word of knowledge and wisdom. And as a result of that, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, bring the children in and you pray for them. So I'm going to do what he told me to do. Now, what's going to be different about these children is that they are at the age where they can pray. So I'm going to give you guys a prayer that I want you to repeat after me. Everybody got it? And guys, just know that this is emotional. So what's going to take place there are pockets, there are holes 
inside of your heart where something is missing. And as a result of that, you long and you do things that are not necessary, but you try to fit in, you try to belong, you try to be this, you try to be that. We're going to take all of that away, and we're going to give you a heart full of his wisdom, full of his knowledge, full of his understanding. So I know you're not supposed to text and drive, but the Holy Spirit gave me this while I was driving, this prayer, okay? So the word sever means to cut it away. Y'all ready? So repeat after me. I sever the longing for approval and acceptance. That feeling that I'm flawed is my fault and if only. Since this longing has been severed, I no longer will be angry with myself, hate myself, or punish myself. So I receive the DNA of my Heavenly Father. I now allow Him to feel all the longings and disappointments of not being accepted by my earthly Father. I receive the destiny planted in me by my Heavenly Father that gives me Direction, wisdom, knowledge beyond my years. This allows me to know only his peace, his abundance, his health, both mentally and physically, and to have self-worth. I will know his unconditional love which is unending. I will not crave from man only that which God can give. But I will receive only the best of my Heavenly Father in my relationships, in my destiny, in my career, and I will not Accept the counterfeit. The same love that God has for Jesus, I now receive that love for myself. In Jesus' name, just close your eyes. Class, you receive something? I receive anything? Okay, thank you. Okay. You can bring the next group. Don't, don't worry about them. Okay? Okay. I right, we bring uh, Jay. They come. What are you guys feeling? What are you feeling? Talk to me. Remember, we were talking about a new norm. So this is a new norm. We interrupt 
regular service for children. That's a new norm. Brothers say, what in the world is going on? What did y'all do with his brother laying over there? So he like, what did y'all do with my brother? <laughs> he looking too. He was like, this is another one. He's like, what y'all, what y'all do with my brother? So parents, uh, you, you can come up and hold your chair. trying to figure out what's wrong with my brother. Y'all heard it right? Shall you hold one and <laughs> Sure, you got sound, right? You can... All right. I got ushers ready to catch. Don't come up a little bit. So the difference with these ones is I'm going to pray the prayer over them as opposed to the other group that repeated after me. So their prayer is slightly different. You guys read it? We sever the longing for approval and acceptance. That feeling that I'm flawed is my fault, and if only. Since this longing has been severed, they will no longer, you all will no longer be angry at yourself, hate yourself, or punish yourself. So you all have received the DNA of your Heavenly Father. We now allow them, you all, to be filled. And we thank you, Father, in advance for filling all their longings and disappointments of not being accepted by their earthly father. And what I mean by that is some fathers have been absent, but other fathers have been busy. So we can have an earthly father who's in the house but too busy That's what I was to my daughter, to my daughters. I now decree that you receive the destiny planted in you by your Heavenly Father that gives you direction, wisdom, knowledge beyond your years. So think it not strange when people say you're weird because you're ahead of your time. This allows you all to only know peace, abundance, health, physically and emotionally, but most of all, his self-worth. You will know his unconditional love, which is unending. You will not crave from man only that which God can give, but you will receive only the best of their heavenly, of your heavenly Father in relationships destiny, careers and you all will not accept a counterfeit nobody will be able to trick you nobody will be able to say come follow me if it's not in line with God's word it's just so so intense because all of us seek God's love, we seek approval but when Jesus in the earth his father loved him and he said he loves us the way his father loved him so the same love that God has for Jesus I now release and give you the ability to receive that love for yourselves in Jesus name Amen
We got everybody? Y'all can leave them down. It's cool. You can stay down there with them. Let's go ahead with service. Part two. Turn your, to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you okay? What'd your neighbor say? <laughs> they said, yeah. So we've been doing a series on Oh, let's do an open confession. Y'all uh, pray with me. Holy Spirit, override any obstacles that have hindered me or are hindering me from receiving my freedom in you. I renounce and counsel the effects of receiving any accusations and lies into my mind, body, soul, and heart that is contrary to the truth of who you say that I am. I declare I live my life loved, cherished, and adored by you. I receive in my heart every expression of your love for me because you love me. I am free of all guilt, shame, and condemnation. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking about the new norm. Uh, Anybody got notes on the new normal, what we've been talking about? Just take out your, you you take notes. New normal. You can get up anytime you're ready, sir. We, We said that we were tired of the old normal. We were tired of the way that the life used to be. And you said that your, your fingers, I just saw your fingers kept moving. Give me a mic right quick. Thank you. Thank you. So while he was laying down, I just kept seeing his fingers move like this. His fingers kept moving. So I leaned over. I said, well, what, what's going on with your fingers? So I was playing the piano because, um, well, what I want to do for my career, I want to make shoes and I want to make beats and with my own my own music. And so after that, I just kept thinking of the piano. And so I just saw a piano. And it was like, it was like the piano was a hologram, but it was just, it was just like light. Like, you know when the light flickers, like, so it's just like, it was just a light. So I just started playing it. Then after I started playing it, it was like this set right here. Then it was a computer. And then it was just like different things I can make my beats. And then after that, it was just my the, like the shoes and everything. I just saw my favorite shoe and stuff like that. I was just drawn on it. And like, it was like that. And then after that, um, I just heard the word like get comfortable. And so I just started, I started getting comfortable. And so after I started getting comfortable, you know, like I, he said, take my hand. And I said, where is it? And he said, just look and stop not, it's like, and see, stop blocking out everything and just see it. You don't got to be scared. Look where you at. You in church. Like, what well, What other places? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, for real. Like, then after that, I took his hand. Then took whose hand? God's hand. Okay. I just want to make sure because cause some people wanted to know. And when I, when I took it, he just said, don't let go. Never let go. Then after that, I just kept holding on and holding on. Then he's like, something's missing. And I'm like, what's missing? He said, a part of you. Then after that, after, you know, it just like, I don't know. I just felt, I I felt good. I felt better. Then like, I just feel like there's something in me that I didn't have before. I felt like, um, because I always felt like there was like, I already I already got everything. I didn't need anything, but I just needed to know that. Like I already, I felt like I already knew, but I didn't know. It's like you know how that stage where you go through your head. Like I already got this. I, I know he's here. Yeah, he got me. But I just didn't feel it. Feel it. And so now I just feel it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, y'all got it. All right, so we've been talking about new normal. So now he has a new norm, not the same norm. I see somebody's hand in the back. Um, So we've been talking about the new normal, and there's 10 things that we're responsible for. Okay. Number one, our feelings. Number two, our attitude, whether it's good or bad. Number three, our behaviors. Four, our choices. Five, our limits. Six, our desires. Seven, our thoughts. Eight, our values. Nine, our talents. And ten, our love. Anybody need those again? Y'all got it? Okay, all right. Let's read this together. 
regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self, completely discarding your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude. Continually renewing in the spirit of your mind. So what does that mean, guys? And with this is a conversational church, so if you need to say something or answer a question, just raise your hand. It might come in your way. If you need a pad to write things down, just slip up your hand. We got that for you. Yes, ma'am. It seems like you never finish. Ooh, okay. okay. I think we sometimes want to be finished. Uh huh. And this says we never finish. Just you don't do it again. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So it's a daily process, an hourly process, a moment by moment process. All right. Anybody else? Head notes on last Sunday. Got one here. Might come in your way. So I'm going to get nosy today. We're going to talk about your normal. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Uh, if I stay normal, that's all I get. If I step outside of the normal, I have no limits. <sighs> that was last Sunday. Come on. Uh, y'all trying to figure out that scripture is uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 and 23. Miss Nicole, what you got? So you gave us a scripture, Hebrews five fourteen. Solid food is for spiritually mature whose senses are trained by practice. Don't practice what you feel. Practice what he said. That was last Sunday. Read, read that part again. One more time. The last part. Don't practice. Don't practice what you feel, but practice what he said. So that mean uh, what? What does that mean? Ed, you got an answer for it? Okay. Oh, something else. <laughs> What does that mean, guys? So in order to go to a new normal, you have to do something different. You got to think different, respond different, and do different. The new normal, not gonna, it, it presents itself, but you got to walk in. Okay? It had, you, you got something? Um, whatever it is, Jesus came back to make our normal better. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean to you? So I got to a place where had an apartment. Okay. Hey, this is the new normal. Okay. But it's not, it's still not as um, the best that God has for me. Okay. He wants me to, he wants me to have something better. So I step out and I okay. start, you know, uh, get my finances straight. Okay. Right. Uh, start stepping out again, looking for properties. Okay. So he's, he's always wanting to make it better for okay. me. Okay. Well, what did you hear say to twice? <laughs> stepping out. So you can't stay there. You got to step out. That's called movement. Yeah. If, if I stay normal, that's all I'll get. Amen. What does that mean to you, Ed? That means, well, what everybody <laughs> said right now. If, if I don't change, if I don't look for something different, if I don't step out of what I'm doing or what I'm comfortable with, I'll never change. I'll okay. never know what my new normal is. Okay. Have you guys encountered certain jobs that you go or where you service? I won't call any job names. Where the people complain the whole time. Yeah. You, you go to them for service, right? And you've seen them for at least 10 years. And they got the same story. Such and such made me mad. Such and such, when is this going to change? When is this going to happen? You're thinking to yourself, won't you look for another job? <laughs> I, I think you hit your hand up. Reminds me of something that um, Corey Dennis said a while back. Um, don't expect new blessings with old habits. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. What does that mean to you, Sean? If you, just like everyone is saying, with if, you, if you're if you just normal and continue to be normal, don't expect something spectacular if you're not trying to do something spectacular. Amen. Right, right, write this down. Some people don't want healing. They just want help. Some people say some people. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that you. I, I'm just trying to stir it up. I'm trying to stir it up. See what I can do. See what I can get. <laughs> he, he said he ain't looking. I ain't looking. I, I'm not going to talk to him. So, y- y'all understand what I mean by help? You give them answers. They don't, they don't, they don't do what you, he- you help them with, right? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to keep on going there. So what's your norm? Now, did we have assignment? Our assignment was? How many? No. Should, should I ask y'all? Huh? 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 No, no. The, the group back there say no, no. All right. So for you all to hear for the first time, 
we had an assignment. And yes, that's a new normal. Church don't give you assignments, but this one does. So the assignment was to come up with a life list. Remember, I didn't say bucket list. Bucket list, people plan to die. Life list, people plan to live. So uh, we had some arguments, you know. Uh, Mr. Friday, when, when I announced this, people were trying to knock it down. Let's do 10. Uh, wh- why we got to do 50? Because if you do 50, you're going to step outside the box after 20. But anyway, so I won't even ask people who did it because it might be a fight breakout. Because <laughs> the achievers will get mad at the underachievers or vice versa. <laughs> y- y'all know what I'm talking about. You got somebody make A's all the time. And then they, they like, uh, uh, uh. Right, right top guard, you know what I'm talking about. So I want him to ask. But l- let me get two people from this side, two people from this side, to share what happened once you got past 20, 25. What, what surprised you about the list? I got one in the back. What surprised you about the list once you started making it? Okay, so I was one of the, the proponents of, we can do 50 things. Okay. And I started writing them down. And I couldn't come up with 50 things. Okay. I think I got up to like 27 and uh-huh. I kind of hit a wall. Okay. And I just kept playing in my mind what you said. You said if money was no object, money no object. what would you do? Oh, that, that changed the game. That's it. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> right. I was like, well, if money was no object, I would get my plane. Okay. And right. I would have a boat okay. and a crew. Okay. All right. <laughs> but each one of them, okay. right? All right. Okay. 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 But I mean, I also came up with things like go back to school. Okay. You know, do a different career, okay. something that's completely outside of healthcare. But okay. you know, I mean, just take off the limits. Got you. Okay. All right. So that happened after twenty five. Yeah. When and you thought you would hit the wall. Yeah, and I have about sixty on them that, exactly. on it now. Oh, I think, see, see. Yes, ma'am. You got one. Yeah, yeah, kind of what she was saying. I started off small, uh huh, and then as I got to um, maybe like twenty, then I started thinking bigger. Okay. You want an example? Oh, I, you, can give me, you can give me two. <laughs> so, like, what was small, I put down what I think is small. Um, I want a Peloton bike. So, I okay. was like, girl, get your Peloton bike <laughs> and get yourself fit. And then by the end of it, <laughs> by the end of it, I was like, shoot, I want to go zip lining in Thailand. I want to <laughs> dance on the beach in the Maldives, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So. All right, good. Good for you. Did, did y'all notice her pep started the pepping? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm very similar to what they said. It, there was a box uh-huh. and there was a wall. And I, I think that I'm creative, uh-huh. but um, it was almost like, are you going to stop here okay. and let the wall kind of just determine how far you're going to go? And then once you go over the wall, it's almost like you're flying. Uh-huh. Like kids, I don't think, have these limitations. So I was like, I just want to go back to when I was a kid and okay. I didn't know okay. that you got to do X, Y, and Z to get okay. these things. God can over overcome the things that I think mm-hmm. I have to get do to get to there. Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah. So Ms. Roslyn accused me of being very strategic about what I do and why I do it. So that's why I said 50 because I knew 20 would be the wall. And once you went past 20, you would open up a whole new arena. Follow me? So that's why I did that. So so anyway, I'm going to keep going. Oh, you got money? You got one. Oh, money, talk to me. All right. <laughs> money just graduated uh, <laughs> from, from college. And for those who don't know, this whole congregation deserve part of that diploma. <laughs> All right. But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y- y'all, <laughs> y'all pay the bill, but we deserve. Okay, go ahead. The same for me when I got to 28. I was like, well, what do I do? What do I really want? And then I had to remember, write the vision and make it plain. Okay. And God t- will see to it that it's done. I said, if I write it and I expect it, God will make it done. Amen. So then I started writing a bunch of things. Amen. All right. All right, so what's your normal? Whatever it is, Jesus came to make our normal better. Whatever it is. So I, w- I want you to write down one normal that you having a challenge with by passing. Growing past that area. You guys can just shout this, these, these out. Just, just shout a couple out to me. Confrontation. Age. Age. Procrastination. Procrastination. Feeling worthy. Feeling worthy. Yeah. That's the front two rows. We got 
organization. <laughs> Look, relax about this. People so worried about their own stuff, they're not going to remember yours. Okay? All right, just, just, just relax about it. Okay? What, what we got going down the line? Sharon, what you got? Intimidation. Doc, what you got? Sickness. Miss Bella? Age? Okay. Lean. Confidence, okay? All right, so whatever that is, age, he's going to make it better. What was yours? Conf- procrastination, he's going to make it better. Confrontation, he's going to make it better. It's called abundance. He's not going to give you abundance of confrontation. He's going to give you abundance of insight about when, how to approach. So right now, just change the word confrontation to address. Automatically, that lowers the, the level of anxiety. Whenever we say confrontation, what do you guys think? Fight. 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 Con- conflict. Okay. All right. What did what, they say back there? Fist fight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We want to change it to address. <laughs> It's called abundance. And what is abundance, guys? I got 15 minutes. What is abundance? More than enough. What else? Overflow. Uh, Wayne on Thursday night saw what? Give me a mic. A wave come in. I saw a pretty, like, aqua-colored tidal wave. Okay. Just um, engulfing, not, not just me, but the church as well. Okay. And it was, it was just peaceful feeling about it. It wasn't okay. like I was scared or anything. Okay. So uh, how many of y'all were with me at uh, uh, North Avenue when church started at North Avenue? One day I was talking about overflow. <laughs> and, and, you know, you know the, the traditional pastors, they have, you know, this, this uh, pretty glass vase and, uh, you know, the nice crystal cup and all that. I just got the cup. Uh, and, and, and what happened, I was talking about overflow, and the Holy Spirit said, they don't know, you, you remember, they don't know what you mean by overflow. I walked up to this base, and I just started pouring the water, and the water came over the edge, came over the table, came over the, onto the carpet, and I just kept pouring. People were like, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> Y'all need to know what overflow was, right? You never forgot that image, right? God is in overflow in your life right now. But because he didn't come the way we thought he should come, he used somebody that we didn't like to bless us. Surely it can't be God. He asked us to do something we didn't think we could do. Surely that can't be God. He asked us to forgive, and, and we supposed to say, you don't know what they did to me? Surely that can't be God telling me. See, he's in overflow in our life right now. But we putting our hands over the, 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 the damn holes. You know, I said damn, you know, like water damn. Okay, all right, just want to clarify that. All right, I don't want nobody, I don't want Doc saying, hey, pastor cussing up in church. All right, y'all got what I'm saying? Y'all know which kind of day I'm talking about. We, we straight, Audrey? Okay, all right. All right. Okay, because I'm telling you, people can say some. Look, look here. Y'all check this out. <laughs> check this out. The thief comes only. What, what does he come on to do? Only. I came. Who is that? Jesus. I came that they might. What, what, what do we word made in the English special? people that know English extremely well. What does that mean? May. What, what, what does that mean? A condition. So they can decide. He said, I came, but you got to decide whether you want to have and enjoy life and have it to, to the full, to the overflow. So you may decide that you want just enough. I'm not talking about just finances, guys. I'm talking about life. What is life like? Miss Rosman come tipping up, this, I mean, all happy and stuff. She won $100. She achieved part of her goal. Why do we have to wait till we get our goal to rejoice? If, if he came to create overflow and enjoy my life, then I'm supposed to enjoy my life when I wake up. I got a neighbor. I don't know why he said this, but I'm looking at him like, what? He said, you know, I'm, I'm out in the yard messing around. And, and and I got my headphones on. He stops. Normally he speaks and keep moving. This time he stopped because I guess I didn't hear what he said. But he said, I was so glad that I woke up. At least I woke up and I woke up in pain. I could feel the pain because I woke up. That's what he said. I could feel the pain because I woke up. Well, 
is it okay for me to wake up with all pain? Can I just wake up happy? So, so guys, I, I don't want you to have to go this way anymore where you say, well, is that God? The way we know it's God, <laughs> we know it's not God if it steals, it kills, and destroys. So is this person, this new person in my life that I think is great and I'm infatuated with, are they coming to steal? When I bring up my dreams to them, what did they do with them? You don't need this. If I bring my, whatever I bring, I was better off before I met them. I had 800 credit score. I met them, now I got 550. Okay? Did... <laughs> I mean, we might have to start over. I understand that. Everybody understand it? But I should be able to see growth when I'm with you instead of deterioration. So after the day, turn to somebody and say, do you need some new friends? <laughs> what, what did he say, Dale? What, what, what did he say? He, he said, we good? Okay. A, a, anybody say yes, they need a new friends? All right. All right. We got a couple of honest people in the church. Because all this time, sickness, is that stealing? What is sickness stealing? Health. Joy. You got to take care of people. Money for a hospital bill. So they say, huh? Freedom. So God made me sick because he wanted to teach me something. I thought he said, right here, this is Jesus speaking, that you may have and enjoy. Have means it's a life. Have and enjoy life. In abundance, to the full, till it overflows. You ever did something tell you were tired of it? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> you got tired of it. He said you do it until you're tired of it. Live and overflow until you're tired. But you can't do that because he says, Megan, that he daily loadeth us with benefits. So that means he don't give us the same benefits he gave us yesterday. He give us more. So you can't get tired of him because he's constantly evolving before you even get there. You you, you meet them there and you think you got new revelation. The revelation was way ahead of you. You just caught up to the revelation he had for over 2,000 years ago. So some of us just caught up. Yeah, she's special, so just leave her alone. Some of us just caught up to healing because I believe in sickness. From my background, my dad was... Uh, Baptist pastor, nothing against Baptist. And he said God put sickness on him because he wanted to teach him something. And I say, well, why are you, Dad? And he say, well, if it wasn't me, it would be somebody else. And I'm thinking it should be that somebody else. <laughs> but, you know, you ain't going to tell your dad that. You ain't going to tell your dad. Party, you ain't going to tell him. You ain't, ain't going to share that with him. So, you know, when I found, after he passed, I found out that this was in operation. I found out, I, I went and I talked to Different churches, and, and one church shared with me, which was Richmond Christian Center, shared with me, said, uh, aren't not this daughter whom Satan has bound, low be loosed on the Sabbath? And I said, wait a minute. What did Because where I was from, we didn't read the Bible. Y- y- y'all understand what I mean? So, some of y'all are new to the Bible. And you can tell, you know, well, before electronics came out, you know, you, you say turn to John, and you can see people flipping around. <laughs> you know, I remember Curl and I, we, we uh, what, what's the front part of the Bible, uh, concordance, table contest. So we copied ours, Debbie. This is what we did. This is what we did. This is what we did. We copied ours, right? And then you put it in the, in the top part so that it's overhanging. You see what I'm saying? And then when you're sitting beside somebody that's peeping on your stuff, then what you do is, you know, you just slide it down. You follow what I'm saying? So when he said church in John chapter 10, then we looked and said, okay, page 15. So then, you know, we, we go over to page 15. Hey, we got it. It looked like we know what we're going on. You follow me? This is the things you do. <laughs> but, but he didn't know. But then when I found aren't not this daughter of Abraham, that was the covenant was made with, be loosed on the Sabbath. And then they took me over here to this. 
I came that you may have life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And it changed my life. Ran home. Well, not ran home. Drove home kind of fast. Thank good and Friday wasn't out there. R- 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 Roll, roll, roll kind of fast. And I wanted to share this with my wife. Because who wants to keep good news? The church would grow if you stop keeping the good news to yourself. This is what I learned at church. This is how the church changed my life. This is what God did in my life. I was poor. Now I'm, I'm, I'm better. I'm in abundance. I, I had a health issue. Now it's gone. I had this. Now it's that. I had special children. Now they they walking in and leading praise and worship. Hallelujah. Okay? All right? <laughs> Say, Jesus did it all. I'm telling you. I got five minutes. All right, y'all got this? Are you content living in Mayberry? What, what, y'all talk to him about Mayberry. What's Mayberry like? Uh, Mike coming your way? You, you, you got it? Give him the mic. Every, uh, it was okay. quiet. Everyone knew everyone. Uh-huh. Um, you could leave your doors unlocked. Okay. Um, you whistling down the street. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he sheriff going on in, in the middle of the day. He going fishing. What you got, Fry? No, it was just safe. Okay. Safe. Okay. Safe. Yeah. Mayberry was safe. Every day was the same. Okay. Every day was the same. You could just count on Floyd or whatever okay. coming out of his shop. Uh-huh. You could count on, uh, you know, Aunt B was going to be cooking. Uh-huh. I mean, everything was the same. Yeah, yeah. Who, I got Mike there? Yes, sir. <laughs> huh? Easy going. Just easy a very going. easy going. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what's that dude that stayed in jail all the time? They left the jail. Oh, yeah. Otis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just stayed in jail. Otis just showed up. Otis showed up. He knew he had a place for I, Yeah, he put his own self in jail. <laughs> It was so normal that they wouldn't even put anybody else in his cell. Right, 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 right. They knew he was coming, right? Ooh, that means something. Oh, go ahead. It was black and white routine. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Correct each other's children. Ooh. Say glow and go. <laughs> no modern technology. Yeah, look at that. It's like the good old days. The good old days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There was very little conflict. Uh-huh. I think yeah. that uh, apparently this comes on TV land, FYI, everybody. Okay. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, you know, like the, the one episode that had the most conflict is when like a bird dropped from the tree and Opie had to nurse it back to health. And that okay. Was, oh, that, okay. That, that was like a very big conflict, but very little conflict. Oh, so, very little conflict. So it's very serene and, okay. and sort of peaceful. Okay. All right. One here. It was a surprise when they had a guest. Oh. And when one person came to town, uh-huh, yeah. everybody got off. You know, okay. Who is this person? What are okay. they doing? So that didn't happen that often. Okay. All right. We're just talking about Mayberry because some people want to stay in Mayberry. Anything new was suspect. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. So this teaching would be suspect, huh? <laughs> I, I remember when Curl and I first moved into a house and... She operates in dreams and visions. And, you know, we, we had the, the uh, $15 lock. Y- y'all know what a $15 lock is, you know, dead boat, you know, dead boat and, and bottom lock. You know, you can get them as a kit. And, and she kept seeing somebody in a, in a hallway in a dream, in a vision. And she says, um, Paul, we need to change the locks. And, and uh, I say, what? Because, you know, I, I was the one with the $15 locks. You know, it's a dead boat. All you got to say is dead boat and you're good to go. And she said, no, we need to change the lock. So I go to Lowe's and I ask them, what's the strongest lock you got? And it, it, we went from $15 to $49. So I bought two. So we have motion lights and all that. But somehow all the motion lights decided that that week that we were going on vacation, they were going to go out. So when we came back, we had both where the person tried to do the dead boat in the front door and in the back door. But I listened to what she had said, Paul, we need to change the locks. And I say that to say, you need to change your locks. I'm not talking about your locks at home. I'm talking about your physical locks, your emotional locks. Because you're letting things in that should not be in your house. I'm talking about you, the body. 
You need to change your locks, change your friends, change some relationships, change some habits, because you're not going to walk in a new norm thinking the old way. What, 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 what did you say, Big Money, about the, uh, what, what, what Sean quoted? You can't expect new blessings with old habits. So you got to change the locks. You'd be amazed at how much time you can spend with a positive person. And check this out. It has little impact, but when you spend time with a negative person, the data grows quicker. I, I have to find that for you. Uh, honey, can you write that down for me? They, they got proven data about how powerful negative people are. You follow me? I mean, when you have a riot and somebody's starting to burn up houses and do certain things, one person might say, hey, let's not do this. But the rest of the group is saying, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And what happens? That one person just fades away. Change your locks, guys. Change your emotional locks. Change your spiritual locks. Let's step out of Mayberry. I <laughs> do something. I do something. <laughs> Dale? <laughs> A whole lot easier to destroy than to rebuild. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Or are you ready for a new normal? His abundant life. I'm going to start with this one last slide for today. The abundant life says the way in is out. What does that mean, guys? The way in is out. So I'm trying to be accepted by you. I want you to love me, respect me, honor me, do all these things. But he's saying for a life of abundance, the way in is out. So step out of your way of thinking and embrace his. Step out of your way of doing things and do it his way. Might come in your way. You know, some of us say that if we get accepted in this club, he said the best way in is out. I don't understand. Can okay. you give another example? Okay. Okay. Um, how many of us have tried to, to get the approval of somebody? How, how is that working? But when I get to a place where I'm at peace, whether you like me or not, then what happens to you? It doesn't matter. So I tried to get in to your graces, uh, you respecting me, liking me, and that didn't work. So I decided I'm going to step out of that and receive his worth. That's why I talked about self-worth to the children. I didn't talk about um, self-esteem. There's two words. Self-esteem means I have to perform to get worth. Self-worth means God has already given you the worth and you just got to receive it. So as long as I'm at the top of my game, then I have, if, if I'm performance-based, then that's when I get self-esteem. Oh, you did great today. You did such and such. You did this, you did this. But then when the accolades stop coming, so does my worth. But if my worth is in him, regardless of the accolades, I, I have it, his worth. So the best way in is out. So you got to step out of what you've been trying to get worth from and step into how he says you get it. He says that you're loved, you're cherished, and you're adored by him. So when I, because see, we choose to believe a lot of things but scripture. So, you know, so I see, we'll, we'll bring up a scripture, and the mind clicks and says, well, I, I spit on somebody. The, 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 the scripture says, well, that's too big. But if somebody say you can't do something, yeah, you're right. So I make a decision that when I hear something that his word says, I can go two ways. I can say, help my unbelief, or I can say, I choose to believe that. But I don't say it in my head, Megan. I say it out of my mouth. Y'all, y'all. Y'all might see me go, you know, like it. You hear the mic? Let me preface this by saying not all police officers. Okay, okay, <laughs> not all. I was in training this past week. Okay. And one of the ways it came out communicating with the public was we have to use profanity okay. for them to understand us. Wow. And that's what I said. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, and just to listen to him say, that's our culture. Okay. We believe because we're in the inner city and we hear all the mm -hmm. profane language mm -hmm. being used to us mm -hmm. 
the only way we can communicate back to them is to stoop to their level. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I'm only saying we have to change. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I, you know, I just think God has led me down this path for that reason. Gotcha. Okay. Not alone, but okay. for that reason. Okay. Because I'm a firm believer in we the professionals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they don't they don't understand when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. then you don't accept that norm. Gotcha. Uh -huh. You find a way to communicate with those kids, mm -hmm. That's right. opposed to taking their way, mm -hmm. opposed yeah. to the right way. Yeah. And so the challenge that I ask you as a pray for police officers okay. and myself okay. is to make that change. Okay. Because it's not about race. And when you deal with what we deal with every single day. Day in and day out. Trust and believe me, these white officers, they care about our community. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. They just fed up and don't know how to deal with yeah. how to change it. Okay. Because they leave the safety of their home just like we do, mm -hmm. and they patrol in those neighborhoods every single day. And when they get a call, they're going to put their life mm -hmm. on the line for us. Gotcha. Okay. And I work with them every single day. Okay. So it's not about white or black, but it's about what we've created and dealing with what we deal with every day. Okay. That needs to change. Amen. All right. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. So the, the, the way in is out. So they gave him a scenario. They gave him a, a directive, cuss at the kids, cuss at the people. But he said the way in to the gifting of God is to step out of that directive. The situation, Megan, you have been faced with that you tried to fix and try to help. And nobody saw that. So you got to a place where you stepped out of that and said, I'm going to please God. So she, she write this down. Let me, let me say it, and then you decide how to write it. It's a scripture. Y'all find it on your own. <laughs> but it says, your enemies will become my enemies. Say, when, when people seem like they're coming at you, picking on you and all that kind of stuff, they just created a red flag to say, okay, you're messing with the wrong one. Because just now, it was no longer you and them. Now it's them against him. It's real stuff, guys. Jasmine? I have a question. Okay. And try not to put me on blast in front okay. of everybody. All right. so no, no blast. The new All normal right. is I remain calm. Okay. I do not get angry. Okay. So I have been thrown test after test, uh -huh. and I've passed each uh -huh. test. So yeah. when the test going to stop coming? Okay. I'll I, I tell you when. <laughs> but I'm like, what, 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 when? Look at Luke chapter 4, verse 13. <laughs> Luke chapter 4, verse 13. So, Jesus was tempted. How long? 40 days. He tried, the devil tried everything. Right, Andre tried everything. And then all of a sudden he said, That completed the test. The devil retreated temporarily, lying in wait for another opportunity. That being said, what, what does that say? He's waiting for another opportunity. So, <laughs> so the anointing is God upon flesh doing only that which God can do. Remember, I shared with you guys, I don't see in Scripture where Jesus walked out of the anointing. He stayed in it. So if, if we have him in us, how come we think we can only have the anointing in church? How come we don't think that we can stay in the anointing? Regardless of what we do, you can do your job under the anointing. You can be a wife under the anointing. You can be a husband under the anointing. You can be a person under the anointing. And so you just stay in the anointing. So when the trials come, you just... You, you're not responding to him. You're not reacting to him. And the devil said, mm. <laughs> "Oh, she she in a good place, but sooner or later she's gonna put down her anointing." But what happens if we never put it down? It's like a shield. Yeah, it's normal. So the new normal <laughs> is I walk in my anointing. You walk in your anointing. Are you gonna have some challenges? Absolutely. But instead of the challenge meeting me, it meets the anointing. God upon my flesh doing only that which God can do. Just like Mr. Friday said. So 
he's already made a decision. I'm not going to cuss at the people. So instead of cussing, meeting Friday, cussing meets the anointing. Now, the people are going to walk away and say, what the blank is wrong with this guy? <laughs> but they're going to be intrigued. They're going to be interested. See, Ch- Chucky them said different is good. Y'all, y'all remember Chucky, the little rug rash people? They said different is good. We're supposed to be different. Chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's us. All right, somebody had two questions, then we'll close with that. Close the service with that. But I had a comment. The, when, when, like with Jasmine, you know, you deal uh-huh. with something uh-huh. and you overcome and you be victorious and win, I say, thank you, Lord, for the practice. Okay. Ooh. Because okay. you're building, it's like when you actually, you're building muscle. Every okay. time you pass, you get stronger yeah. and you get stronger and you get stronger. So when okay. I win and I recognize, I was like, ooh, I responded differently. Okay. I said, oh, thank you for the practice. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. I just was thinking. Right, right, right this there. Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Right, right this there. I, I meant to share this with you early. So much stuff. <laughs> I'm sharing. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it for Stop saying how shocked you are. You got a profile on the person. You've known the person for 40 years. And you still say, I'm shocked by it. Stop saying you shocked. And say, nothing surprises me. I, I, wh- what's that word right there? Nothing. nothing. Because a lot of times, so when we are shocked by it, we stay in it. We don't move from that. Because we're still dealing with the shock of the person who did what they always do. <laughs> so as a pastor, took me eight, I've been pastoring for eight years here. But after year five, I started to realize nothing surprises me. And you know how fast that reaction time is now? Because I'm not trying to figure out you because you didn't surprise me. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's sort of like you in shock. You're stunned. So I want you all to get, um, this is me. Now, some of y'all are going to walk away and say, okay, I want milk. I'm going to still say, (laughs) they shocked me. Okay, Go, go ahead. But that, that was brief. That, that's session three. All right, go ahead. It just reminded me of the message you minister of the warrior within. Uh-huh. Because for so long, I think, I don't know other people, I, I saw myself as the pastors are the warriors, okay. right? Okay. I'm just a sheep following the shepherd. Okay, okay. But so then when stuff would come at the sheep, I'm like, I'm just a sheep. Why are you coming uh-huh. at me? Uh-huh. But the way you were teaching us was like, don't be surprised. You know, a a soldier going into battle shouldn't be surprised that people are shooting at him. There you like, go. Why, yeah, yeah. why are they shooting at me? I didn't do nothing. Yeah. It's the yeah. government. No, oh. <laughs> you represent you God go. and, and they're coming at you. Yeah. So Amen. I appreciate that. Wow. Amen. Uh, I remember people called Curly and I, you know, they, they signed up for service when it was peaceful time. <laughs> and, and, and then they get deployed when they call Curly and like, Curly and I, would y'all pray that I won't be deployed? And Carolyn, you know, Carolyn straight up, straight forward. She said, well, what you sign up for the military for? <laughs> Don't army fight? Yeah. So, you know, they, they didn't call us no more. <laughs> 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 I got I, I, I to do We got to decree and declare. Anybody else? So, so Jazz, answer your question. Is welcome to abundant life. Yes. So, like, for example, me and Corey, we're going to go to a relationship night at a church, right? right. We're, we got all cute for each other. Okay. We okay. smell good. We okay. took a shower. Okay. We're on the ride there. We're <laughs> running a little late because, okay. you know, I'm a little late sometimes. And then Corey's car just cuts off and stops working. Okay. I'm being the godly wife that I am. I'm speaking in tongues over the passenger <laughs> side while I'm still looking at my hair, making sure everything good because we're still going to make it there. <laughs> he calling AAA. We don't know where we are on the highway. Okay. Like, we're like, okay, Lord, whatever. The old me would have got pissed Next. and I would have went off even uh-huh. though it had nothing to do with him. I'm quiet. I'm still applying lip gloss, whatever. He calling AAA. <laughs> the car starts working. We get back on the highway, make it home. So I would have been upset that our plans got messed up, but I kept it moving. Okay. So then we're like, oh, let's go to the movies. I got two free tickets. Let's go. As I'm in line at the cashier, okay. the other cashier sells the 
the seats that we were about to buy. Okay. I was like, hand me my tickets back, please. Okay. Thank you. And I walked out the door. I would have been pissed, okay. like pissed. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, I pray every day. Like, what is going on? Okay. Okay. Like, what else can you do but pray? Yeah, that's enough. Celebrate. Celebrate the fact. I'm sure Corey was excited that you was at this peaceful place and kept putting on lip gloss and checking your hair. I'm sure he was appreciative of that. Did you sleep well? Okay. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. So that shows the enemy. Wow, I took my two best shots for her that day, and she slept better than she ever slept. I'm telling you, see, I can tell by Jazz's face, that was not the answer she wanted to hear. Okay? But anyway, I'm going to move on because, see, I'm in the place too. See, I'm like it. Go ahead. Then we're going to close. You're about the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Give it to him. It, it's um, Exodus 23, verse 22. If you listen carefully to what he says, and do, meaning God, and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you. One of my favorite scriptures. Because, see, you're not doing nothing. All you did was you quote the scripture. That's all you did. See, y'all acting funny. Y'all act like Christians can't have enemies. That's not our intent. But just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, some people don't like you. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> y'all act like y'all want to stay in church. <laughs> I mean, stop, stop being naive, man. It's the real deal. The scriptures say we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, blood against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. So when someone comes against you, depending on which side they're on, follow me? There are sides as to why they're coming at you. But he said don't, you, you don't wrestle against the flesh and blood, but still, the, the enemy is a real person. Uh, one there and then one there and then we are going to do our decree. So you can even put the decree up here. Yeah, so like you were saying, as far as your enemies, uh, your enemy can even be your footstool. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if you're trying to get to a a next position or a next level, you might need to use your enemy to put your foot up there so you can get to the next level. Amen. So celebrate them while they're celebrating you or hating on you. Okay. All right. That's a good way. Stepping stone. Who else? Anybody else? Stay you straight. (laughs) Huh? One more? Yes, yes, ma'am. I mean, the whole time, this one scripture's been coming to my mind. I say it. And I'm trying to <laughs> relate it to, well, it, uh, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Okay, okay. All and right. I've been trying to relate it to different things, and I just, just haven't gotten it together. Yet. Okay, I appreciate you sharing. We're in the world, but not of the world. So the world is limited to world systems. We are limited, unlimited, by a system that is de- developed by God to have no boundaries. The world says you get counsel, you're supposed to die. But we got somebody in the back there, raise your hand, Sharon, that death tried to take her, and the word says no. You follow me? But if you under that system, you the doctors say you got it, you're going to die. We under a system where we're not... We can have a favor that will overrule our financial life. That's how Carolyn and I got two cars in one day. They didn't see the credit report they pulled. They say, see, saw the credit report he pulled. So you, you follow me? All right, so let, let's go ahead and our creed. I stir up the gift that is within me by faith. I'm stirring up the power that is within me. I'm stirring up myself and running fear, procrastination, and every hindering spirit out of my person. This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com. Or call at 866-333-9505.